Hello, it's nice to meet you all and thanks for a chance to be here. Um, my name is Eva Anjane and I will speak about uh, the experience of Latvian National Museum of Art on how to create more open, more involving museum, the museum that's more inclusive. And I think with some of you we have already met because a few years ago we are museums visited Latvia and it was located in Latvian National Museum of Art. So it's nice to see some friendly and well-known faces here. Okay, so I should probably have presentation. How do I start it? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, I would like to begin with this citation from uh, the book called Constituent Museum, uh, because I, re I feel that this uh, question is very important for museums in general. So, uh, and the question is, what would happen if museums would put relationships at the center of their operation and not act uh, and treat visitor as passive receiver, but to treat a visitor as someone who provokes, who facilitates, who inspires, and who can really influence what museum is doing. If we think about uh, access accessibility and openness, of course, uh, today it's one of the most important questions in, that's at the center of attention of museums all across the globe. And museums today serve as spaces where people can rest, where they can enjoy, enjoy art, where they can contemplate, where they can spend some time together with friends, with families. I have a long list here. and. Uh, What's beautiful is that museums serve spaces where you can not only enjoy past heritage, but where you can also use it to, in order to create something new. And I really believe that museums have become a social space where people are at least as important as available as that are kept at museum dep depositories. So if we think about open and inclusive museums, of course, uh, contemporary European muse museums should, at least if we think about architecture, all be physically accessible. And if the museum is lucky enough, it's uh, wheelchair accessible, as we can see here. But uh, the main question is what we do about collections, what we do about our exhibition halls, because still uh, this place uh, at a lot of museums are, well, they still are locked behind glass panels and uh, they can be enjoyed only with eyes. So uh, if we think about ac accessibility, uh, of course, uh, I can't offer you any universal solutions because uh, it de really depends on the building, it depends on type of collection, it depends on staff attitudes. Uh, but uh, later on, I will also lead a workshop where I will share uh, our experience uh, and I really believe that there are these baby steps that you can make, going from very small things to larger, 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 and you can become more and more influential. In our case, uh, we began to t uh, think about more inclusive programs well, more than eight years ago, uh, when one of our departments, Art Museum Riga Burst, was op reopened after reconstruction. And the first thing we did, we had this really accessible building, but we didn't know what to do with collections there. So the first things we did, we began some co collaborations and we tested the exhibitions ourselves. Uh, we got uh, glasses that stimulated vision defect defects. We got wheelchairs and uh, we tested uh, our exhibition halls ourselves, like whether I can see uh, all the objects here, whether I can get uh, through our exhibition hall in a wheelchair. Uh, and uh, the second part was collaboration. Uh, and uh, 
first events where we tested what we can do, what we can do. We began very simple. We began with guided tours, with touch tours, as you can see here, where we allowed to touch sculptures to explore uh, the museum collections with senses. After that, uh, we got more sure about ourselves and uh, we started to organize special events. And here you can see an uh, education program that's dedicated to White Cane Day. Uh, and it's already uh, organized not for people with uh, disabilities. It's uh, organized for school children in order to talk about these questions, to remove this uh, stigma of special needs in a way. Uh, and here you can see combined group uh, from two schools. One school is for uh, blind pupils who are um, well, the part of the group is from there. And uh, the second uh, part of uh, this group is from ordinary school, uh, where pupils have never had a chance to uh, be in close connection uh, with, people, with uh, visitors like that, this. And what they are do doing here, we had a uh, specialized event where both kind of uh, pupils had to cooperate, uh, they had to collaborate and work together, and they explored the museum's collection, not with eyes, but with senses, with uh, smell, with things you can hear, with things you can touch. Uh, they listened to music, they touched objects, they tasted some, uh, t um, here you can see, Chinese art, some Chinese t uh, tastes, and so they, they were very participatory. Uh, and uh, over here, this lady here, this is one of our museum volunteers, who was also very, uh, very, very uh, into the project, and uh, the pupils were uh, working together also with museum's volunteer program at the time. After this, uh, collaborations uh, became bigger. And now for the past uh, four years, uh, the museum op uh, offers uh, education programs that's called Come to Museum. And that's de uh, dedicated especially to pupils from all kinds of schools. Uh, children with disabilities, uh, children without disabilities who during the school year visit museum. They visit museum together several times. They participate in educational workshops, they participate in guided tours, they must collaborate, uh, they can befriend each other. And here you can see the opening event um, of this education program. And uh, this is one of the workshops. And here, for example, uh, you can see uh, one of creative tasks they should do. Uh, this boy here, he's creating copy of old master's painting on wood using 17th century technology. With uh, pigment and egg whites. So these are not uh, workshops that are made simpler, that are made easier. These are workshops that uh, would be that are very interesting for everyone. And uh, the last step uh, that we have uh, taken last year. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show you any pictures. Uh, we have uh, also um, started a research to participate in research. And uh, last year, we had a researcher who worked on art therapy at our exhibition halls. And she was researching visitors with dementia and uh, exploring whether art and regular museum visits uh, can uh, give some results 
for these people. And uh, the first the results that we have gained, and mm, uh, this researcher has told us that um, people with dementia who visited museum on a regular basis, they, of course, were not cured completely, but their memory got better. Uh, they could remember uh, their previous museum visits. They could remember what they were talking about. They could remember how they uh, met museum staff. So the, again, these are very, very small steps, but very important. And uh, the hopes for us are that we will have a chance to use this methodology that's created in order to work on further projects. So from first small steps, from learning ourselves, from testing ourselves, to collaboration, to smaller events that uh, grows into something bigger, into bigger educational programs, and then uh, moving forward to research uh, potential for the future. And uh, yes, I will probably tell, tell, have a chance to tell more about these uh, steps to those of you who will visit my workshop. Uh, but uh, we were discussing at museum what really makes museum inclusive. And uh, we decided that there are four words we should remember. So the first one is collaboration, because uh, only when we collaborate, uh, we can come up with new ideas and we can learn something new. Uh, it's communication. Communication not uh, only at museum, uh, between staff. Uh, communication with uh, various visitor groups, communica communication uh, about their needs, their wants, and things they uh, are waiting for. Creativity. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, we had this small minute, three-minute presentation about money and about large budgets, I think. Um, and sometimes you don't need a lot of money in order to create something new. And you can come up with uh, creative solutions also without um, large budget. And courage. Uh, in order to create something new, in order to make some innovations, to start things that are new for you, for you, uh, you have to have courage. And uh, then there's fifth element that's unfortunately not there, but that's most important. And uh, these are people. People who work at museums, people who visit museums, and uh, people who are interested in art and cultural heritage and in particip participation. So uh, these are my contacts. If you are interested, uh, you can ask questions now. You can write me and ask questions later. And I will be happy to meet you later on. Thank you.